Hello and welcome to the Evidence-Based Chiropractor. I am your host, Dr. Jeff Langmaid. Today's episode, we are going to break down how impactful testimonials can be for your practice. And if you're thinking that sounds old school, you are wrong. I'm going to showcase some sample scripting, some ideas, and really give you, hopefully, a big, complete package on how you can institute testimonials to further the success of your practice. We're going to tie it back to research. We're going to bring in some marketing. And this is going to be an episode that is going to pay dividends, I think, for your practice for many weeks, months, and hopefully years to come. We are talking testimonials today. This is a huge focus of what we are doing within the Smart Chiropractor in 2020. Yes, there are some awesome review and testimonial software you know, products out there and services, those are great, and many of them can help expedite your reviews and testimonials, but I want to just talk like real brass tacks of this, as well as highlight some action steps that you can personally take, no software needed, to be able to see results with testimonials. So as I said at the top, you might be thinking to yourself, testimonials, I don't know, they're like hard to get, they're super old school. I'm going to hopefully convince you otherwise. Are you somebody that looks at Yelp ever? You know, do you go and look at Google reviews ever? If the answer to that is yes, you understand the importance and power of testimonials. I mean, pretty much most of us, before we go to any single restaurant for a single just dinner, check out what the reviews look like online, right? I know I do multiple times per week and especially multiple times per day when I'm traveling. That's just for eating a meal. Imagine people who are making decisions with their health care. And as we know with chiropractic, our utilization stands at like 15%, maybe, not 95%. So not everybody is like, yeah, chiropractic, absolutely. There's some fear, there's some friction to overcome just for them to decide to look up a chiropractor. In your reviews, in the testimonials that you have, the content that you produce, showcasing the benefits you provide the people in your community can be a huge asset towards building and growing your practice. For instance, imagine if you opened up, you were looking for an orthodontist. I don't know why I chose that, but let's say you're looking for an orthodontist and you look and on Google or on their Instagram page or whatever the case may be, somebody has testimonials, reviews, I'm going to use them a little bit interchangeably in this conversation, at 105 and it's four and a half, five stars, and the next person is at like, you know, four reviews, right? You're probably going to at least look at the website of the people that have, you know, 20 times the reviews first. I would say many times you might just look at the reviews real quick and make that call. So if you've been slacking on this in your practice, you're missing out on a huge opportunity. Especially the the other benefit for what we do as chiropractors is we get awesome results, right? You know, surgery, sometimes it's 50-50 depending upon the surgery. Medications, meh, ineffective most of the time, don't really work very well. What we do is has such high efficacy, we should be the people out there putting out the most reviews and testimonials regarding our services because there's such a high likelihood that the people leaving your practice are super jazzed with the benefits they received. So you are exactly the type of healthcare provider as a chiropractor that should be using testimonials to their highest advantage, just because of even if nothing else, just the sheer numbers of happy patients you have based upon the fact that you are a chiropractor. So with all that aside, I want to break down some tactical tips on how you can utilize testimonials in your practice. Again, this has been a huge area of focus for us at the Smart Chiropractor. So if you want really full-scale marketing, blog posts, videos done for you, video scripts, social posts, email services, all of that automated done for you, emails built out for you, email funnels built out for you, check out the smartchiropractor.com uh, because it includes all of that and much more. And a portion of what we're doing again in 2020 has to do with testimonials. So we're really emphasizing the importance of having a testimonial Tuesday where every single week you have a testimonial going out across your social channels, showcasing the benefits that you provide real people in your practice. My question to you would be, if you had a literal testimonial every single week going out, 
do you think that would benefit and impact your practice? I hope that your answer to that is absolutely yes, because I can tell you, if you do, it is going to benefit your practice. A testimonial every single week. Testimonial Tuesday. Put it on your calendar. Let your staff be aware that that is what is going on from this day forward. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, gosh, that sounds great in theory, but how do I get a patient every single week to give me feedback? That sounds like a lot of work. And the answer to that is, if you have great processes and systems, getting that patient shouldn't be a problem. But even if you do not have a patient with you, I'm going to make an argument that you can still do what I'll call a case study testimonial, which can be just as impactful. So let's split this in two different ways. Number one is you might be using, again, a product or a service to get reviews or testimonials that's kind of automated. If you are, sweet. That is awesome. If you are not, then I highly recommend on your patient's depending upon your practice, you might choose to do it at a different time after their first visit, after their first treatment, after their first reeval. It's up for you to decide. I would highly suggest that you have a form at the bare minimum, right? If you're not using a service or a product that automates this for you, have a form that asks for feedback regarding their experience in your practice. Now, I'm going to encourage you. I know I gave a few options on the timing of this, whether it's after the first visit or the first treatment or that the first reeval. I'm going to encourage you, if you have a really nice practice, which I hope you do, then to do it after the first visit. Because a testimonial and a review doesn't always have to be about the result or outcome of care. It can be about the experience with the service. So I would highly recommend having a form that somebody can fill out at the conclusion or towards the end of the first visit. You know, what was your experience like in the practice? You know, these sorts of things. How, you know, are you, what are you hoping to get back to doing as you go through care in our office? This gives invaluable information regarding, number one, real life feedback as far as, hey, was their first visit awesome? Because if it's not, you want to clean that up. You're going to be struggling in every other aspect of your practice if your first visit isn't like A plus service. So getting that feedback is really important. The second aspect of that is understanding what they're looking to get back to. What are the benefits they're looking for? That's great, right? Now it gives you better information on how you can serve that patient, but it also gives great information that down the road, again, within the law, I'm not an attorney with testimonials. You want to make sure you're compliant with your state, local, municipal, and country law. However, it is even great to have something that says, you know, Karen, quote unquote, I can't wait to get back to, you know, running two miles every other day, right? That's an inspiring message that it might not have done it yet, but it's an inspiring message and something you can utilize. Now, the second aspect of this is where I want to spend a little bit more time and drive into. Not only do I highly recommend that you collect that information after the first visit, but I'm going to highly recommend that with Testimonial Tuesday, you take that as an opportunity to share a testimonial case study of what you've seen in your practice. So there's no excuses. If you don't have a patient to join you for Testimonial Tuesday, when many times you might not, no problem. You still do it. And here's what exactly what I mean by that. I highly recommend on Testimonial Tuesday, you take the time to hop on, whether it be Instagram stories, whether it be Facebook Live, whatever your platform of choice might be. And simply say something to the effect of, hey, this is Jeff Langmaid with the Smart Chiropractor, and I get asked all the time if chiropractic can help with, insert title here, right, hip pain, knee pain, headaches. And the answer to that is yes. As a matter of fact, we recently saw a patient, I'm going to call her Karen, and she came in here with hip pain that prevented her from doing X, Y, Z. After our care and treatment, which included a little bit of X, Y, and Z, she was able to get back to doing the things she loved with the people that she loved. For instance, she was able to get back to doing insert life effect here. If you or someone you know has struggled with hip pain, then please give us a call today at one two three four five six seven eight nine, and we cannot wait to hear from you and get you on the road to recovery. So you can see right there, that's a simple example of how you can execute a Testimonial Tuesday each and every week in your practice simply by hopping on and giving a case study. 
talking about you know first name only or a patient we're going to call you could change the name again you want to be absolutely sure that you're compliant with your law but showcase hey here's the problem choose a symptom a problem a diagnosis each week i get asked all the time if chiropractic can help with insert you know symptom there and the answer to that is well hopefully it's yes if you're doing a testimonial right so now you have the opportunity to elaborate here's what this patient was struggling with here's a little bit don't get too technical on what you did in the practice but here's a little bit of what we've done to help him or her get back to doing insert life effect or the benefit of your care there and then don't forget to conclude it with a nice little call to action if you or someone you know is struggling with this issue right insert issue here then please don't hesitate to give us a call at insert phone number there that sort of thing each and every week can be unbelievably powerful when marketing your practice it's a great opportunity for people to share it's a great opportunity for you to share the results of your practice and ultimately to get more people exposed to the benefits you can provide them the best thing to get what you want is to help other people get what they want. So again, this is a huge part of what we're instituting within the Smart Chiropractor. So if you're looking to better market your practice in 2020 and you want all the tools automated and done for you, then check us out at thesmartchiropractor.com. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic week in practice and I will talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Evidence-Based Chiropractor. If you want to grow your practice, come back for next week's episode. If you want to grow faster, visit the evidencebasedchiropractor.com and join our MD marketing membership today.